Hey everyone, welcome back to Ask Amy. Um, in my basement right now, right beneath my office, there are some girls karaokeing. So, um, is that even a word? Karaokeing, uh, doing singing karaoke. <laughs> I can hear "Shut Up and Dance with Me" and some little kid voices just beneath us. So, I apologize if you can uh, hear that through the video. It's summer, so I have a question today from Colleen. Um, Colleen says. I feel like in the past few years, the biggest trend in wellness has been being mindful or being present. When I read the little book, A Big Change, it made sense to me that being in the present moment and not being bogged down by thoughts of the past or future is our default state. However, I seem to always fall into the trap of worrying, maybe because I'm always afraid of forgetting something else I need to be doing. It keeps me from paying attention to what I am doing whether it's actively listening in a work meeting or playing with my kids or talking to my husband. Then I just feel shame for not being present, thinking stuff like, what's wrong with you? Why can't you just pay attention? And so on. Any suggestions for how the principal's understanding can frame this issue? Thanks for your consideration and for all your amazing work. So Colleen, um, first of all, <laughs> you're so normal and and I just want you to consider that the the only, and take this for what you will, but the only kind of problem here is that you think there's a problem. I don't know anyone that feels present all the time or who is constantly focused or who, you know, I don't know, whatever this, this, this idea of being mindful, being present, see, it ends up being just an idea that we create, right? Like we have this image of what we think it means to be mindful, be present, how we're supposed to be in a meeting, how we're supposed to be with our kids, where our head's supposed to be, how we're supposed to feel. I know you're not sitting around creating that on purpose, Colleen, but that's what kind of happens as we hear about this. And I even just hear it in how you say like the biggest trend in wealth and wellness has been being mindful. Well, I don't even know what a trend is, but a kind of stereotyped image and idea that we, you know, kind of take from, from what we hear, or what we see, and then it becomes a thing in our heads. And that's so normal. Like, that's just what minds do, right? But when that happens, we forget that we don't realize that that's what happened. <laughs> and we think, oh my gosh, I'm not doing it. It's a real thing. There's a way to do it, and I'm not doing it. I'm not there. And then we suffer. And then when our mind naturally wanders, because it always will, Colleen, always, your mind will always wander. But when it does, if you think there's a mindful or present place you're supposed to be or a way you're supposed to feel and you're not there, then it's a problem. Then it's a problem when it wanders. So, and then, then you suffer, then you worry even more, then you feel guilty and, and you feel shame, like you said. You see how that kind of works? But it's only because there was a standard there to begin with. It's only because it, it looked like there was a way you're supposed to be or feel. And when you don't match up to that, everything lights up and says, you're not doing it right. You're not matching up to how you're supposed to be. And then it feels like a big problem. So just in terms of how our mind works, you know, like you say that you kind of, kind of heard that, that presence or mindfulness or something like that. Again, I don't even like those words because they have so much thinking and so many images and expectations attached to them. But, but you're right that, you know, there's a, there's a way where we just sort of are here in the moment all the time. And you could say that's our default state in a sense. So that's true, but at the same time, we're all human beings with minds that are also designed to wander, that just do wander all the time. So that's where it gets to be a bit of a, wait a minute, I thought presence was my default state, therefore if I'm not present, I'm messing something up. No, it's both. They're, they're, we're always present in a sense, we're mindful, we're here, it is our default, everything else you know, equal, we kind of come back, there's a, there's a home, there's a now here that we kind of bounce back to. And it's also 100% true, just as accurate, just as right, just as normal and human and okay 
to say that our minds also just go all over the place. They wander all the time. It's a little like balance, like balancing your body. You know, like when someone balances in this yoga pose, for example, they're not still. They're swaying and falling and then catching themselves. Swaying, falling, catching themselves. Now, to the naked eye, it might look like they're perfectly still, but and it probably doesn't if you really look, but they're not. There's no, there's no like perfect staying right there. And it's the same mentally. There's no perfect staying right here. There's just wandering and then maybe coming back and then wandering and maybe coming back. And again, what I want you to see in this, Colleen, is that happens naturally, the comeback, the wandering and the comeback happen totally naturally in a beautiful, perfect human way that we don't have to do anything about. It's not a problem. And in fact, the comeback will happen even more quickly in general and kind of just the whole thing will be an easier process the more we see that it's supposed to happen that way, that we don't really have a choice. Like there's not a problem here. Again, when it looks like it's a problem, you know, then everything, then every time we wander, we start beating ourselves up. When it looks like, oh no, I might forget something, you know, and then you get all caught up in that and then you feel guilty for getting caught up in that. That's just layer and layers and layers of thinking about how it should be, where you should be compared to how you are. Get rid of the how you should be, and then you're just how you are, you know? I mean, I know that sounds really simple, but it is that simple. It's really, it's really true in that way. So I hope, I hope that makes some sense. I also just want to comment on the fact that you said a lot of your worry is about forgetting something else that you need to be doing. And, you know, I hear that a lot, that there's this, this way in which we think we have to stay kind of mentally vigilant because what if I forget? What if I don't remember this thing? Or what if this slips my mind? Or what if I, what if I let my guard down and then something bad happens? And it's, it's just a little bit of like, it's like your foot's just on the gas, just, just enough. And it kind of runs in the background that it zaps a lot of your energy and it feels like your foot's on the gas. You know, it's just this little bit of like hypervigilance. And, and no matter what it's about, staying safe or looking out for bad things or for not forgetting stuff or whatever, but I just kind of want you to see that for what it is, too, because people forget stuff, and people don't forget stuff. <laughs> people think they're going to forget stuff, or they think it'd be a horrible thing, and then they don't forget it, or they forget it, and it doesn't matter all the time. We forget stuff, and who cares? I guess I didn't need to know that. So see if you can kind of just see there's this little bit of, like, foot on the gas pressure, like, ooh, what if I forget? I better stay vigilant that I want you to see for yourself though, I would say is absolutely not at all necessary or helpful. You don't need it. It's not doing anything for you. It's okay that it's a bit of a habit, but I want you to kind of be curious about like, hey, what if, what if I don't need that at all? What if that has no usefulness for me? There's nothing in that that's kind of helpful or necessary. And in fact, what we kind of need to know, we tend to remember, and a lot of the things that we kind of forget, we don't really need to know, <laughs> you know, kind of open up to that. Um, that's been huge for me too. I'm a huge list maker. I have tons of ideas constantly, and I, and I used to be more in a place of like, oh no, I might forget them, and you know, how that looks now is I just, write down notes and make lists everywhere I go to kind of just in a very practical way to not forget things. And then beyond that, as soon as it's down somewhere, it's like, okay, it, like something bigger has got it. If this is important, if it's a good idea, if it's actually something I need, I have no question it'll come back. It'll just show up when it needs to show up. And said the other way, if something vanishes from memory, <laughs> a great idea that goes away and never comes back, I don't think it was that great of an idea, and I probably didn't need it. I'm pretty sure I didn't need it if it's gone and never comes back. So see what lands with you in that, too, because I kind of picked that up from your question that there's a whole thing in there about um, trying to not forget. So I hope this is helpful, Colleen. I hope it's helpful to everyone listening. The karaoke singing got quiet as soon as I called attention to it. So that's cool. Didn't have to hear that. And um, yeah, thanks so much for being here, guys. Have a great Monday, and I'll see you next week.